Hey everyone, Talking Dave over here. Dorky Talking Black Guy who's just trying to get by. And welcome to another edition of Comic Book Origins. Here, I talk about the first appearance of a superhero or villain directly from the source comic book material, having little or nothing to do with how they are first introduced into a movie or TV series. And today, I'm going to be talking about the first appearance of the man without fear, Daredevil. So the comic starts where four goons are in their hideout and they're playing a card game, it looks as if, and Daredevil just crashes in and demanding to and demanding uh, of the four, where is the fixer, you know? And the four goons are like, you know, we're not going to tell you and everything. Who do you think you are? A fight ensues and Daredevil beats the crap out of all of them. And then basically Daredevil just says, all right, I've played enough with you guys. Now, where is the fixer? And the goons are like, we give up, we give up, all right? You know, the fixer should be here any time, right? And then after that, that's when we flash back to basically, you know, Daredevil as when he was a boy whom we know, whom we know as Matt Murdock. And we see him talking to his father, Jack Murdock. Now, I need, to keep, I need you guys to keep something in mind. He was not called Jack Murdock in this comic, right? He is actually just known as Battling Murdock. And, you know, he's definitely middle-aged. And you, basically, here, basically, um, Battling Murdock tells, tells Matt, listen, I promised your mother when she died that uh, you were not going to grow up to be like, you know, a guy like me. You're going to study hard, go to school, be a doctor or be a lawyer or something. You're not going to be like, you know, some over the hill boxer, right? And, you know, Matt is like, you know, going through his neighborhood and going through school, seeing people playing football and stickball and is depressed that he can't partake in it. And the kids on the block are making fun of Matt for studying all the time and basically gave him the nickname Daredevil out of nowhere. Hmm. I wonder what, I wonder why he got the motivation to call himself Daredevil. I wonder. Anyway, so meanwhile, Battling Jack is having a hard time finding um, a manager or a promoter that will set him up for fights. And everyone's telling him, like, yo, you're too old, you're too over the hill, blah, blah, blah. And then one person says, the only person that might hire you is the fixer. And Battling Jack is like, and Battling Matt is like, listen, I don't want to work with the fixer, but, you know, Matt's studying really hard. And, you know, he's a teenager now, so I got to start paying for his school. You know, so <sighs> Battling Jack actually ends up wor um, going to the Fixer. And the Fixer's like, yeah, sure, I got a couple of fights for you. And so the Fixer's arranging fights for Battling Jack. And he goes home to tell Matt, but Matt is actually not home. He's actually walking back from the library. And he sees, an, he sees a blind man on the street. And a car, a truck is actually um, going straight for him, you know, and... Matt notices this, and then Matt pushes the guy out the way. And the next panel, you see that basically everyone's surrounding them, and he's saying like, "Oh my God, the kid's a hero! He just saved that. He said saved that guy. Oh my God!" But like, it looks like some of that stuff, uh, that canister spilled on him. Is that stuff radioactive? Call an ambulance. So we don't necessarily see the actual accident, nor do we necessarily see the results. Well, nor do we necessarily see like you know the chemicals pouring into Matt's face. But what we do see in the next panel that um, the doctors tell Matt that he can no longer see and then battling Murdoch is depressed by this day that he let his son down. And, you know, Matt's like, I'm alive. That's all that matters. I might be blind, but I can still study. And he, Matt notices that basically his senses are heightened. He can touch a book and tell basically like, you know, what the letters are by the print, by the grooves of the print, he can actually t um, taste a pretzel and know how many grains of salt are on the pretzel. He can actually sense his objects nearby, you know, basically a sort of a radar sense. So, you know, Matt, losing his sight has caused Matt to heighten all of his other senses to the millionth degree. And so we next see Matt, who's in State College University, where he has a room name named Foggy Nelson. And Foggy is like, like you know, Foggy and Matt 
get along very well, but Foggy has this twinge of jealousy um, towards Matt because Matt actually aces the exams with ease while Foggy struggles, you know, despite, you know, studying very hard and Matt having his, Matt being his study partner. And Matt deduces that the accident also heightened his capacity for learning and retaining information, right? So later, the two see that basically Jack actually is uh, the number one for contender for the heavyweight boxing match. And the fixer tells battling Matt to take a dive on that, on that, um, what you will call him, in that match. But while Foggy and Matt are actually attending and watching, you know, battling Murdoch, Valley Marcus is like, listen, I can't lose, you know, basically because my kids are here. My kid is here. So Battle and Jack wins the fight. And Matt tells his father, you've just proven to me that if you have courage, if you work hard, anything is possible. But the fixer is not happy. And he tells his guy Slate to take care of Battle and Jack Murdoch. And while well, Battle and Murdoch is walking through the street, you know, we hear a gunshot in the next panel. We see that Battling Murdoch is dead and the police have like, you know, no leads. So Matt is depressed, but Foggy tries to cheer him up and tells him, listen, your father would want you, wouldn't want you to be this way. You're about to graduate. And besides, my dad has some money coming in and I could open a practice, but I want you to be my partner. And so Matt and Foggy graduate, open Nelson and Murdoch, and basically, you know, Foggy actually introduces Matt to Karen Page, their new secretary, who Foggy is actually sweet on, right? But then Matt notices that basically he can't concentrate while he knows the fixer is still out there. And, you know, basically he wants to be able to do something about it. So Matt decides, but Matt says that he promised his father that he would use his mind in more than his brawn. So Matt says, you know what? So Matt Murdock won't go after the fixer. Someone else will. So he takes his father's old uniform, decked out in like, you know, the red ro the red robe and uh what you wanna call him? His like uh what you call him? Red robe, uh yellow t yellow trunks and like basically also black shirt and everything, black muscle shirt, and then he makes his own outfit, you know, with a hood, well not a hood, but a mask covering his face and his eyes. And so this is where we jump back to the beginning where basically the goons that Matt beat up as Daredevil, you know, are chilling out waiting for the fixer to come, which the fixer and Slate does come. And another fight breaks out. And during this fight, basically the fixer confesses, well, Slate confesses to killing Balin Murdoch, but the fixer confesses to ordering it. And uh, the fight goes out into the streets where basically they run to a subway station and Daredevil actually like, you know, knocks down Slate while the while the fixer himself actually is on the platform and with the cops also giving chase as well, the fixer collapses and dies from a heart attack. Meanwhile, Slate act Daredevil actually gets Slate and Slate confesses to killing Battle Murdoch to the cops. So Daredevil, like, you know, Runs off, basically, and he's back into the office of, of Nelson and Murdoch. And Foggy says that, yo, this guy Slate, they uh, he confessed to killing Battling Jack, and he tried to call us for representation, but we turned him down. And then Matt is like, nah, it's cool that you turned him down. I'm glad you did. And Matt's just like, you know, looking out and saying that now that he can actually dispense justice, both in the courtroom as Matt Murdoch, but, you know, and other times as Daredevil. And that's pretty much it, guys. You know, now, Daredevil's origins have been fairly well adapted in both the movie and TV series. So it's a very straightforward and simple origin story. But also, there are some other things that got changed later on thanks to the creativeness of Frank Miller. But did you got, are you guys fans of Daredevil? Are you guys excited for Season 3? Uh, do you guys want me to talk about more Daredevil? Daredevil stories, particularly the Frank Miller reboots with on retcons, which go a lot deeper into the mythology of Daredevil. Please drop me a comment below, give me a like, follow me on Facebook at Token Dave or on Twitter at Token Dave eighty. Subscribe and ring that bell so you know when new video loads. But until then, this has been Token Dave, the dorky token black guy who's just trying to get by. And I'll catch all of you later.